Hello everyone, my name is Ludovica Pieroni and I'm a PhD student at UCL. The work I'm going to present is entitled Optimized Strategies for Seismic Resilient Self-Centering Stick Moment Resisting Frames. My co-authors are Fabio Freddi from UCL and Elena Lettore and Massimo Latour from University of Salerno. Nowadays, conventional structures after a seismic event experience significant structural damage and long repair time. Within this context, there is a urgent need for seismic resilient structures able to minimize both structural damage and repair time. In our work, we focused on steel moment resisting frames, which express a loss of resilience after an earthquake by inelastic deformations and damage in structural members and residual solid drifts. In the past years, many innovative seismic resilience solutions have been proposed in order to overcome these issues. Among others, base isolation systems and supplemental damping devices have been widely investigated and are now widely used in practice. However, systems like BRBs or dissipating braces have the main disadvantage of experiencing large residual deformations. To tackle this problem, Self-centering damage reconnection have been proposed. This technology is based on rocking systems which ensure the structure to go back to its initial position after an earthquake without any residual deformations. They can be applied in column bases and beam to column joints. Self-centering damage reconnections have many advantages. For example, no residual deformations, no structural damage and energy dissipation. But there are also some disadvantages. In most of the cases, self-centering connections are used in all column bases and beam to column joints. And this configuration leads to an increased structural complexity and an increased cost. Recently, many studies focused on this problem. For example, Elettore et al. investigated a steel moment resisting frame with self-centering column bases. And it has been shown that self-centering column bases are effective in, re in reducing the residual deformation uh, for low-rise building, but are not enough for mid and high-rise building. Within this context, our main objective is to define an effective placement of a limited number of self-centering um, devices such that their contribution in improving the seismic behavior of the structure is maximized. In our work, we adopted the self-centering connection proposed and experimentally tested by Latour et al. at University of Salerno. This technology is based on friction dampers and self-centering systems. However, the results we're going to obtain can be generalized for all self-centering connection with uh, flex-shaped moment rotation behavior. We proposed an, an optimized design procedure based on three conditions, the no yielding of the structural element, the self-centering capability of the joint, and the gap opening um, activation just for seismic event corresponding to the design um, intensity. Partial safety factors were considered in order to take into account the variability of um, friction coefficients and uh, post-tensioning post forces. The case study frame we considered is shown in this figure. We focused on the perimeter moment resisting frame with three base and height stories. The design of the moment resisting frame was done according to the Eurocode height with conventional column bases and full strength beam to column joints. Then 50 different configurations were defined. They are based on the just design moment resisting frame with the, the inclusion of self-centering connections at specific locations. So we have three main configurations, the conventional moment resisting frame, the moment resisting frame with self-centering column bases, and the moment resisting frame with self-centering devices at all column bases and beam to column joints. Then we have two additional configurations based on the differentiation of the self-centering beam to column joints internal and external. The remaining configurations were divided into groups according to the numbers the number of self-centering beam to column joints levels they have and they were defined considering that the joints belonging to the same stories 
have um, the same property. For example, the configuration C47 has self-centering column bases and self-centering beam to column joints at story 4 and story 7. And overall, it has two levels of self-centering beam to column joints. We developed nonlinear models in OpenSeas. The frame modeling were, was um, developed considering lumped plasticity for beams, distributed plasticity for columns, and modeling the panel zones with rotational springs. For the self-centering connection, two models were proposed. An advanced model was used for self-centering column bases and a simplified model was used for self-centering beam to column joints. The main difference be between these two models is the fact that the advanced one is able to account for the variability of the axial force occurring in the columns in the, um, during the seismic event. Then push-pull analysis were performed. In this figure, we can see the relationship between the base shear force and the top story diff ratio. So the behavior of the moment-resisting frame and the moment-resisting frame with self-centering column bases is similar, and they both experience large residual deformations that can be seen in correspondence of the base shear force equal to zero. Conversely, the, the moment-resisting frame with all self-centering beam to column joints has a completely self-centering behavior with no residual deformation. And, and here we can see that increasing the number of self-centering beam to column joints, the, the, the residual deformations are decreasing and the base shear capacity is decreasing as well. This is due to the fact that the self-centering um, connection is able to transfer a bending moment which is lower than the one transferred by the conventional uh, connection. Then we we investigated the total dissipated energy. Here we did a comparison between the conventional uh, connection in red and the self-centering connection in blue for both column bases and beam to column joints. In this figure, we can see that the moment resisting frame and the moment resisting frame with, with self-centering column bases dissipate the same amount of, of energy, while the moment resisting frame with self-centering beam to column joints dissipates less energy. This is due to the fact that the, the bending moment reached in the self-centering connection is lower than the, the one reached in the conventional connection where the plastic inch occurs. Additionally, we can see that um, there is an, a decreasing trend uh, of the total dissipated energy by increasing um, the number of self-centering uh, devices. Incremental dynamic analysis were performed. We define an average spec, an average um, period between the, the stiffer configuration and the most flex flexible configuration. And um, we consider ever average spectral acceleration as intensity measure, and we 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 scaled the 30 ground motion records with constant steps of 0.1 g until 1 g. After performing IDA, we post-processed the results for the stripe of the incremental dynamic analysis with an intensity measure equal to the design-based earthquake. So here we can see the statistics of the residual interstory drifts for each configuration. The, the red line represents the, the median value, while the gray area represents the 16th and the 84th percentile. So we can see that the, the moment resisting frame and the moment resisting frame with self-centering column bases have almost the same residual deformations, while the, the moment resisting frame with um, all self-centering beam to column joints has negligible residual deformations. We can identify a global trend which says that increasing the number of self-centering beam to column joints, the residual deformation de decreases. While focusing on each group of configuration, we can see that um, the configu configuration with, with consecutive levels of self-centering beam to column joints applied at lower stories um, has smaller residual deformation than the others uh, of the same group. For, for example, C12, C123, 
C1234, etc. On the basis of the median value um, of the residual deformation for each, for each group, a best and a worst case um, uh, were defined. These results were further um, post-processed and investigated. Here we have the residual, the residual deformation versus the number of um, cell centering um, beam to column joints level. So, for example, here in, in, cor in correspondence of this vertical, we included all the results of the configurations with three levels of cell centering beam to column joints. This part is the, the crucial step of our work because here we defined regression lines that can be used as a tool in order to predict uh, the expected residual deformation for a structure with a, with a certain number of self-centering damage-free devices. Additionally, we, we investigated the the dispersions of the results calculating the standard deviations, and it can be seen that by increasing the number of set centering devices, the, the, the residual deformation decreases, but also the, the dispersions of, of the results um, decrease. We um, investigated the peak in the story drifts and we saw that the, the moment resisting frame with cell centering beam to column joints has higher peak in the story drifts. And this trend is um, in line with the results of the total dissipated energy because the moment resisting frame with, beam, with cell centering beam to column joints has um, a lower capacity of dissipated energy. Um, the, the peak acceleration uh, is a parameter that is not sensitive to the, to the increasing number of um, self-centering uh, devices. In fact, all the configurations have almost the same value of um, peak acceleration. Um, fragility curves were derived in order to confirm that the, the results obtained from, for the um, uh, design birth earthquake are valid also for a wide range of um, a wide range of intensity measures. Um, the conclusions can be summarized in this point. So we developed an optimized design procedure for self-centering connections. We derived the regression function able to estimate the expected residual deformations for um, a structure with uh, a number of self-centering mean to column joints. We demonstrated that the inclusion of a larger number of cell centering beam to column joints level leads to smaller residual deformation and smaller values of uncertainties. Additionally, uh, within the investigative configurations, placement with consecutive cell centering beam to column joints at lower stories show smaller residual deformation compared to other configurations with the same number of cell centering devices. Fragility curves confirm that the, the results are valid for a wide range of intensity measures and maximum peak interstory drift and acceleration are less sensitive to the number of set centering into column joints. The current work we are developing is about the definition of optimal placement of cell centering connections through genetic algorithm based on the minimization of the residual deformations. My presentation is finished. Thank you for your attention.